The Galatian Christians, they had originally heard a, a plain gospel preached. But then after Paul left, someone came along and preached a more complicated gospel, <laughs> adding in like requirements for the law. And Paul got wild about it. And he said, if you get saved by the law, you don't need Jesus. So that raises an interesting question. Why is there even a law? Well, that's what this chapter is going to answer, along with other things. But let's read first. Foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you to not obey the truth, before whose eyes Jesus was openly portrayed as crucified? I just want to learn this from you. Did you receive the Holy Spirit by working of the law? or by hearing faith. And so are you so foolish? Having begun in the spirit, are you now completed in the flesh? Did you suffer so many things in vain, if it is indeed in vain? He therefore who supplies the spirit to you and does miracles among you, does he do it by the works of the law or by hearing of faith? Even so, Abraham believed God, and it was counted to him for righteousness. Know therefore that those who are of faith are children of Abraham. The scripture, foreseeing that God would justify the Gentiles by faith, preached good news beforehand to Abraham, saying, In you all nations will be blessed. So then, those who are of faith are blessed with the faithful Abraham. For as many are as are of the works of the law are, are under a curse." For it is written, Cursed is everyone who does continue in all things that are written in the book of the law to do them. Now that no man is justified by the law before God is evident, for the righteous will live by faith. The law is not of faith, but the man who does them will live by them. Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law, becoming a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Christ Jesus, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Brothers, speaking of human terms, though it is only a man's covenant, yet when it has been confirmed, no one makes it void or adds to it. Now the promises were spoken to Abraham and to his offspring. He doesn't say to descendants as of many, but as of one, to your offspring, which is Christ. Now I say this, a covenant confirmed beforehand by God in Christ, the law, which came 430 years after, does not annul so as to make the promise of no effect. For if the inheritance is of the law, it is no more of promise, but God had granted it to Abraham by promise. So why is there the law? It was added because of transgressions. Until the offspring should come to whom the promise had been made, it was ordained through angels by the hand of a mediator. Now a mediator is not between one, but God is one. Is the law then against the promises of God? Certainly not. For if there had been a law given which could make alive, most certainly righteousness would have been of the law. But the scripture imprisoned all things under law, that the promise by faith in Jesus Christ might be given to those who believe. But before faith came, we were kept in custody under the law, confined for the faith which should afterwards be revealed, so that the law has become our tutor to bring us to Christ, that we might be justified by faith. But now that faith has come, we are no longer under a tutor, for you are all children of God through faith in Jesus Christ. For as many of you as were baptised into Christ have put on Christ, there is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither slave nor free man, there is neither male nor female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. If you are Christ's, then you are Abraham's offspring and heirs according to the promise. All right. The Galatians had the gospel preached. After Paul left, some other people came along and added to the gospel. <laughs> They said, yes, you'd have to trust in Jesus, but you've also got to be circumcised and start doing the Jewish things. And Paul says, if you add one thing to the gospel, it's not the gospel anymore. 
he says, you foolish Galatians. That's in verse one. Who has bewitched you? You know, who has come along and twisted your brains around and believed some completely different thing? You fools. It, interesting, that phrase is translated in interesting different ways in different versions of the Bible. In the New English Bible, it's translated, you stupid Galatians. <laughs> in Philip's translation, it's translated as you idiots. <laughs> I love it. Um, however, I don't think it's quite as rude sounding as it sounds in some of those translations. The, the Greek word, uh, which I looked it up, I found that Jesus used the same Greek word in um, Luke chapter 24, when he was walking on the road to Emmaus and he was explaining to the, the, the two disciples, he said, how foolish you are and slow to believe. He said it to them. He wasn't calling them idiots or stupid, but it's a, the, the sense of it is that someone is just uninformed and hasn't made the attempt to try to understand. So it's like, you know, try to understand this. You know, what aren't you understanding? It's something like that. You foolish Galatians, who has twisted your thinking? He said, and this is it in a nutshell, Jesus died on the cross. If you could get saved by keeping the law, why did Jesus even die? Think straight. <laughs> and he says, and you know, circumcision, of course, what happened was these people came along afterwards and they were like saying, yes, you have gotta trust in Jesus, but you've gotta be circumcised. You have gotta keep the law. And Paul says, the law didn't even come along until more than 400 years after Abraham. Abraham was saved by faith. The law didn't even exist for four entire centuries. He said, if there was a way that you could be saved by the law, it would work. But it doesn't. <laughs> That's why Jesus died on the cross. Get your thoughts straight. It's about Jesus. <laughs> so it's, you know, it's really, really clear in Paul's mind. But so if you, so there's two things we have to mention here now in this video. One, if you are thinking you need to do Jewishy type things, Old Testament things to be saved, or they need to be added to your faith, you've got to get very clear. They don't. It's Jesus alone that saves. It's not Jesus plus now do a heap of Jewish stuff. Paul, Paul was really wild about this. He called them foolish. So don't you be foolish. <laughs> so that's one point. One point is we've got the gospel and everything we need for life and salvation has been given to us through Jesus Christ. We don't need to add on to it Jewish ways of life. That's a clear, clear point. But it raises a question, why do we have a law? If, if the law was in the Bible, and if, but if it's not for being saved, what is it for? And Paul answers that question, verse 19. He says, then why is there the law? He says it was added because of transgression until the offspring should come. The offspring was Jesus. It was added to, for, for the purposes of showing sin until Jesus would come. He says in the very next little section, he says that the law was a tutor to bring us to Christ. What's a tutor? A tutor is like if you're not doing well at school and you need some help, the tutor will come, a tutor is someone that will come and help your kid or help you with your schoolwork to get you up to where you need to be. So the tutor was someone, the law was a tutor to show us where we need to be. The law is the law was given to show us that we need Jesus. You might say, well, that doesn't make sense. You know, you know, we, we all know we're not good people. You imagine a situation with no law. You imagine driving through a red light, um, but there's no law that says that that's wrong. And a policeman pulls you over and you say, I haven't done anything wrong. There's nothing wrong. But imagine now the same situation with the law. Now the law is in place, you've broken the law and you know it because the law tells you. Because of the law, you know that you're a sinner. So what does that do? It puts you in the position of needing Jesus. <laughs> so the, the law demonstrates 
that you need a savior. It brings you to Christ. Um, Dr. Creasy says, this is his way of describing it. He says, the law is the straight line against which we measure our crookedness. If we didn't have the law, we wouldn't know that we were crooked. I have written this. I have said that the law removes our sense of entitlement and leaves us with nothing except to cry out for mercy. If you didn't have the law, you would think you would be good enough. You would think you'd be deserving. But as it is, you're not deserving because you can't measure up to God's standards and the law shows us all of these things. But Abraham was saved when the law didn't even exist. So you can, you, in fact, that's the only way anyone gets saved is by faith. But the law shows us that we need to be saved. So that's why it's really, really important. If you're a non-Christian or if you're a Christian that's kind of, um, you know, unclear about these things, doing things to get right with God will not get you there. Now, making an effort to be a good person is, you know, definitely make an effort. It's worth making an effort. But it's not making that, making that effort will never get you up to God's high standards. Even if you manage to get yourself, you know, half good, you're still not going to be good enough for God's high standards. And that's what the law demonstrates. The law demonstrates that these are God's standards, but no one is able to measure up. A simple way of checking is to just run through the Ten Commandments. And you'll be able to, just by asking yourself questions about each of the Ten Commandments, you know, have you ever told a lie? I can't, I've never met anyone who honestly, who, who the problem with liars is that they lie about that too. But the, if anyone was honest, they all admit that at times they've told lies. As you go through the Ten Commandments, stealing, honouring your father and your mother, your attitude towards God, you know, keeping the Sabbath day, a day of rest, all of these things, there's not a person who has been able to keep all of these, even people who've tried. Even Jewish people who've tried their best were not able. And Paul says here that if you are trying to get saved that way, you've got to keep all of it. It's one or the other. You either get saved by putting your trust in Jesus or you get saved by the law, in which case you've got to perfectly keep it all and you can't. But that's not what the law is for. The law is to show you that you're not good enough so that you'll use the, uh, the only method that actually does work, faith in Jesus Christ. So I encourage you, place your faith in Jesus Christ. I'm going to pray a prayer right now. It's a prayer of putting your trust in Jesus and inviting him to come and to live in you and dwell in you and work in you. Pray that prayer with me. Lord Jesus, I ask that you would come and fill my heart with the presence of the Holy Spirit. I put my trust in you right now, that you would lead me and guide me. I want to follow you. I want to do things your way. And I know I can't without your help. I place my life in your hands today. I trust you with my life. And I ask you to save me and deliver me and bring me to the place you want. Amen.